Hi everyone! If you're wondering, yes I am recording this on a brand new camera. I am so excited to have this camera. I've been shooting videos on the same DSLR that I've had for I think about 10 years now, maybe more, and um, it's it served me really really well but honestly this upgrade, even just the fact that I can actually turn around the monitor and see myself, it just makes setting up for videos so much easier. The clarity is brilliant, I bought myself a cheap little microphone and it even sounds better and I'm just really really excited to be able to bring this camera around with me as well and um, shoot some nicer footage than just the stuff that I've been shooting on my phone and stuff like that as well. So so um, yeah, without further ado, I thought that today I would actually do a bit of a tarot video because I haven't talked about tarot on the channel in a while. To be completely honest with you, I had this plan to get back into tarot and start figuring out in a serious way how it works for me, um, how I want to use it in my own practice, how I want to talk about it on the channel. I wanted to start using it again uh, to read for myself and so on on a kind of constant, on a regular basis. And that has not happened. I just really haven't had time because I've been moving back here and just trying to deal with a lot of different stuff that has come my way since coming back here. It just feels like it's one thing after another, which is often the way when big things are happening. Uh, so, but yeah, I, I kind of just wanted to ease myself back in and dip my toe back into the water um, by making a quick video. And what I thought I would do for this video today is just draw a couple of cards. I've drawn three cards at random and I had a theme in mind uh, before drawing these cards. So it's a little bit like what I might do if I was going to draw some tarot cards to journal about for myself. And that's kind of roughly what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be kind of connecting these cards to my current situation and uh, kind of themes that are relevant to me right now. But I am going to try and focus on um, making this relevant for you as well so that I'm kind of offering you an idea of how I might work with these cards uh, to deal with the current um, life situation that I'm in and um, so that it might give you ideas as to how you might use the cards to read for yourself um, especially if you are in a situation like I am in right now and that situation is transformation change um, going through kind of big changes big um, lifestyle lifetime changes and um, especially feeling a bit uh, confused and maybe scared about uh, the way forward, uh, particularly with regards to uh, my career and uh, just finishing the PhD and just like what my life is going to look like uh, over the next few years. Um, it, it feels like very kind of a big uh, big questions are arising now because I'm kind of um, moving back to this place where the rest of my life is supposed to be kind of happening. So there are a lot of big questions and big fears coming up for me. So it feels like a transition that is, you know, not just a moving of place, but also a huge transition in terms of moving into um, a new stage in my life. So if you're going through any kind of transitions or changes like that, um, this might be uh, relevant or helpful to you as well. So the first card that I drew was the Empress and I'm really happy to have drawn this card uh, for this theme because it's not a card that I would actually normally associate with tra transformation and big life changes but I feel like it's a really positive affirmational card um, especially in this context uh, because the Empress, I associate the Empress with uh, creativity and um, with really being able to mine your own depths and um, really reach into yourself and be very kind of self-nurturing but in a very active way. There is kind of a sense that the Empress, um, not so much that she's calling you to, not like a knight or um, one of the very kind of um, outwardly active cards. Um, I would say that the Empress is more of kind of an inwardly active card, uh, that she's kind of calling you to um, find a stability in yourself and kind of find the core of yourself in this moment in time, um, but to be proactive and to be creative with that. So not to let yourself fall into stagnation, but to kind of um, take the, the situation at hand and take the resources that you have. In particular, I would I would feel the kind of inner resources that you have and um, use this time and the place that you're in and the things that you have within uh, to start creating something new and to start making the most of the fact that this is um, a new time in your life, that this is a time for freshness and new starts and that you can absolutely take the opportunity to change things really radically and really drastically uh, in your inner life, in your outer life and to start kind of maybe balancing the two. 
I definitely see the Empress as being um, very much uh, attuned uh, from her inner, inner self to her outer world, that she is in harmony um, with the life around her, that she is able to kind of channel uh, the outer world uh, on the inside and kind of channel the kind of uh, creativity and life around her uh, into her inner world and then likewise channel that inner uh, creativity and uh, inner vitality into um, her kind of mundane life around her. And of course, the Empress is associated with motherhood and um, fertility and pregnancy. And I definitely feel at this point in my life, and um, when I'm going through this kind of big outward change and uh, kind of the reflected inner change, um, that I am at a point where I can either kind of choose to feel out of control and uh, feel as though things are kind of being imposed on me, or choose to see this as a time of pregnancy, as a time um, where things are in gestation, uh, whether that's in my outer world or my inner world, and um, that I can kind of choose to uh, kind of accept that there's a certain element of pause and waiting. There is, um, you know, like I say, the, the Empress isn't an active card in a very sort of outward moving, quick movement kind of sense. It's, it is kind of more of a card of, of pregnancy and that kind of pause before the outward manifestation of the new creation. But it's a very, very creative, a very, um, very virulent kind of time of pause. Um, you're not looking at the hanged man where there's this this sense of a kind of cessation of change and movement and creativity. It's very much a time um, when, sure, you might be kind of waiting for something to come into fruition, but there's very much a sense that something should be happening within, that you should be working on things, that you should be accessing your inner creativity. And um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really liking having this card as a kind of inspiration to how I might treat this time in my life. There are a lot of things going on around me and it's easy for me to get very overwhelmed. It's easy for me to feel like I'm not making progress and it's easy for me to kind of, um, I could, I guess, step away from being as active as I could be. So I, I feel like the Empress is calling me to a kind of balance. Um, and that's actually going to come up again with one other of the cards. Now that I'm looking down at the three cards that I've chosen, I think this, this theme is going to come out again. This balance between... Um, accepting that there needs to be, uh, that I need to take things kind of slowly, that this will be a time of pause and that everything can't happen all at once. Um, but also kind of feeling called to um, really use my inner creativity and really bolster my inner vitality so that I can be bringing my A-game to this kind of new stage in my life. The second card that I chose is sort of very different and also maybe similar in some ways. Um, I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. It is the Four of Cups. So I feel like the fact that it is in the suit of cups very much is in line with the Empress. I think of the Empress as being a very kind of watery card. Honestly, can't remember if that's the association that's normally made with the Empress. Maybe she's more of an earth sign. I, off the top of my head, I can't remember. I'm not big into the kind of astrological um, associations with tarot, but I associate her in my mind kind of more with, well, both with the suit of cups and I would say maybe the suit of pentacles. Um, but the suit of cups to me seems like an apt uh, suit uh, to come up and it's apt for the pips card to pop up to be um, a cups card. I think because even though the changes that are happening in kind of my life are mostly on the outer, like the, the biggest changes that are happening are obviously outward changes. It's the, the moving country and uh, moving into a new house and moving things around and moving furniture and getting work done on the house and fixing things that are broken. It's all very kind of pentacles stuff. But the turmoil and the difficulty of dealing with all of this is not so much in the pentacles, it's in the cups. It's in the kind of emotional reaction and um, the kind of figuring out of how I feel about all of this and making sure that the waters are calm and that I can kind of um, move through all the mayhem of the kind of practical material aspects of this um, while kind of feeling in kind of control and in harmony with my own emotions and just feeling satisfied with uh, how I feel about this move. And it, there's just a lot of questions that come up and it's all kind of coming from a very emotional uh, cups kind of place. And the four of cups is an interesting one because whereas like w I said with the Empress, I felt like the Empress was calling me to action to a large extent, to be creative and uh, to kind of 
uh, bring my vitality into play and make sure that I'm not stagnating, that I'm not just um, taking this time as uh, just complete lull in my life, but like I feel like the Empress is more telling me, you know, to kind of um, bolster myself and uh, be creative with this time and make sure that I get things done internally and creatively. Whereas the Four of Cups is almost sort of telling me the opposite. Uh, the Four of Cups kind of the fours in general I associate with both stability but also potentially with stagnation um, especially uh, the four of cups and the four of swords actually the four of pentacles to some degree as well there is this kind of sense of in the fours that it is a very kind of stable number but also because it's so stable you've got the the potential to kind of get too bogged down and to get um, a little bit too rooted and not be able to kind of move and the, the four of cups is very much speaks of that to me he's almost sort of of rejecting the cup that is being offered to him because he's just being so passive um, that he's refusing the help or, or the gift that's being offered to him and that's the way that this card is often interpreted. The way that I'm choosing to see this uh, is kind of twofold. I'm choosing to take the message of that I was kind of seeing in the Empress as well uh, that this is going to be a time to some degree of a lull and that there is a certain extent to which I have to sort of sit back, sit things out, wait for things to kind of come into fruition and that I can't push too hard for everything to kind of be perfect. This is a time to build a foundation and to focus on my roots and focus um, on the kind of important things, the core things in my life and not to get too bogged down with the fact that things aren't perfect and the fact that there's a long way to go in all areas of my life until I feel Feel like uh, things have kind of gotten to um, a point of like a nine or a ten in the pips for example. Um, so I feel like the four of cups to some degree is kind of reminding me of that again as with the Empress that sense of pregnancy to take that pregnant pause and to accept that as part of the journey. Um, but I also kind of feel like the cup that's being offered to him is reminding me again of this sense of the Empress and the gifts that the Empress offers and that this is kind of a gift being offered and it's making me think about how these times of change and turmoil and transformation while they can be very very challenging and and very emotionally it can cause a lot of emotional upheaval they are also a gift in that they give you an opportunity to kind of reassess uh, your life and your priorities they give you an opportunity to reassess your inner world and uh, to kind of come back to yourself and um, I feel like all the excess gets stripped back and you're left in a very vulnerable kind of stripped back to the core kind of um kind of uh, sense of yourself and uh, yeah this card is really reminding me to take the time to kind of be aware of where my emotions are at and take the time to kind of um, yeah get back to basics and to maybe journal and a lot and be introspective and um, yeah that those two cards combined are really kind of uh, really kind of reminding me and uh, and kind of calling me to remind you that when you are in these these moments of change and turmoil um, it's important to remember that the turmoil will offer you gifts that the the change and the transformation it doesn't last forever um, uh, and it will actually offer you a wonderful uh, opportunity to just make sure that you're on the right path and make sure that you are actually satisfied with the way that your life is set up. It kind of gives you a blank slate a lot of the time when there are big changes happening and you can kind of reassess pretty much all areas of your life. And But that is difficult. It, it, it's exhausting and time consuming and it does take time and it's not going to happen overnight. So there's kind of this sense, I think, with both of these cards of this um, wonderful kind of gift of introspection and creativity and an outburst of, um, of all these wonderful things that can be happening coming from within um, but also a sense that um, there's no there's no point in trying to push these things to happen sooner than they can there's no point in trying to fix everything immediately that sometimes you actually have to kind of suffer through the agony suffer through the pain suffer through the turmoil and really be there for that turmoil and really turn up for that and really pay attention to it and pay attention to how you're responding to it because that will be really valuable and it will actually lead to greater growth and it will lead to you being more satisfied with um, the place that you end up after you've kind of gone through that period of change and transformation. And the last card that I drew was Temperance, which I think is just the kind of perfect card to wrap up the message that I've been kind of drawing from these cards because Temperance is really kind of uh, really driving home 
that sense that I was getting from these cards that this period of transformation that any time when you're going through um, big changes in your life, big external changes and big questions and when you're really trying to figure out the fundamentals of your life and the shape of your life, um, that it is important to maintain that balance between taking action, remaining active, keeping moving and making progress and not kind of letting yourself just fall into a space of just despair and um, and just letting yourself just stay in a place where you're dissatisfied um, with how things have kind of uh, come into being or with things that have happened. And then on the other hand, finding that space and time to process and not pushing yourself too hard and too fast, not expecting too much of yourself, not expecting everything to kind of fall into place immediately or, or overnight, that it is very important to kind of, again, I feel like there's a lot of kind of um, element of water coming up in these cards. There's very much this call to process the emotional side of change. And um, even when you're really wrapped up in the pragmatic things like you would not believe the lists the to-do lists that I have I have um I use a, a to-do list app and it has kind of projects in it so all my to-do lists are kind of um they're they're kind of within there's like to-do lists within to-do lists essentially and I have a whole section called house which is all the things that need to be done to the house and this is on a very like uh this is on a very immediate basis like there's a lot of other much more fundamental work that will need to be done down the line but even the kind of work that needs to be done within the next six months on this house like the the list almost feels infinite like the, I haven't even written everything down into it and it just keeps going and going and going and I think yeah when you are in this phase of whether you're moving house or changing jobs or moving cities or changing anything major in your life even if, if a relationship is coming to an end or anything like that it can mean very big kind of fundamental changes to your day-to-day -day life you can suddenly find that your routines are completely um completely up in the air everything has changed the rug has been completely uh, pulled out from under you and and um, you can get really, really focused and bogged down on the mundane uh, aspects of that. And that can be very, very stressful. Like if you feel like you don't have any emotional time or space to process while you're kind of going through and and um, just really kind of panicking and, and uh, just being very, very active and, and just getting kind of ticking off those to-do lists, um, it can get very frazzled and very kind of rushed. And I think if that happens, you're in danger of missing out on the gift that a big change like this can have to offer. I think you're in danger of um, just pushing through a, a phase in your life that actually it might feel very uncomfortable and it might not be somewhere where you want to drop anchor and you want to spend any time in at all. You really just want to get to the other side. Um, but it is really, uh, in my mind anyway, it is a wonderful opportunity and the perfect time in your life and the best kind of time in your life to assess and to um, really pay attention to where you are at and be honest with yourself about where you were at and you know I've been doing a lot of that recently I've been doing I've been realizing a lot of things about my life and fundamentals about my life like my spirituality that's mostly what I've been talking about that is what I talk about most in the channel so that's most of, mostly what you've been hearing about but almost all avenues of my life I've been asking a lot of big questions about and I've been realising a lot of things that um, actually maybe no longer do make sense for me that I hadn't realised when I was in a routine and uh, in my old life I wasn't really noticing all the ways in which the different things in my life ne weren't necessarily fitting anymore and it's when you when you kind of it's uh, to my mind it's like a reversed tower moment um a tower moment to me is is a bit more dramatic and it's a bit more painful and it's a bit more something has really gotten blown up reversed tower to me is more about just those times in your life when you go through change and it just you feel like you've been stripped back to the foundations and you have this opportunity to really look at those foundations and say okay you know these are the main pieces and in parts of my life and am I happy with that and do they make sense and actually do I want to introduce something completely different and completely new and do I want to actually let go of some of these things at this point in my life do they make any sense to me so I hope that's been relevant to some of you um, as well as for me that's actually been very helpful for me and if you liked this video do let me know and I will make more of them I don't think I've made a lot of these kinds of videos before where I draw more than one card at once I know I've made a few of them um, in the past usually I do much more structured videos I 
used to make the Tarot of the Gods videos and I used to also do the two minute tarot videos where I would just draw one card. But I like the idea and I know I've seen a lot of YouTubers do this um, and I've really enjoyed those videos where they will have a theme or, or you know, uh, something like that, an element of life um, that they want to kind of choose some cards to talk about and to kind of draw together under kind of one theme. And I, I really enjoy doing that. It is kind of like doing a reading, um, but a very generalised kind of reading. And I personally get great inspiration from those videos as to how I can interpret the cards for myself. So um, I'm hoping that that might be the case for you too. So yeah, do let me know. Let me know if you enjoyed this and uh, hope you're all doing really well. As always, thanks a million for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And do hit the, the bell, the notification bell, um, if you haven't already, just to make sure that you actually see all my videos because otherwise they might kind of slip under the radar. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon.